is going on guys eric or aviator back here once again playing some of this game now what game is this uh that's a good question i'll have to let you know in a second when i remember the name of it oh wait it's microsoft flight that's right all right so we're gonna tip that thing oh crap don't crash don't crash sorry i'm still getting used to the idea that the uh throttles are in the wrong place which is freaking me the freak out man uh regardless we're gonna climb out right here to 500 feet and do some sightseeing here in this aircraft and uh it says i'm stalling i'm not stalling you liar it doesn't stall until you hit 64 knots, 60 knots max, like it's the lowest, It'd probably be less. All right, we're gonna pull that throttle back about uh, 85%, she says. I don't know how to do that without switching hands, so. Uh, Drop her power back. Nose down. There we go. Oh, sweet. That's easy. Much easier. All right. So we've got this all set in, in place now, I think, pretty well. Uh, we got the things pretty well. We're going to fly through the cruise ship here. Sorry, I, I'm, I had to get focused here to figure out what the heck I'm doing. I didn't realize I was going to have any change in stuff in cockpit, with, which just seemed kind of weird. But let's see here. Am I climbing still? That's better. All right. Once again, we're going to lift that nose. And we got the trim set now, I do believe. Pretty close anyway. Um, yeah, much better. All right, bring that nose back down. And here we go. So we're flying to the cruise ship. We're going to do a quick little pass over this cruise ship. Before we do, let's go ahead and just crank and bank, as you can see right here. We're at 500 feet. We're doing a nice little barrel roll right around. And hopefully we got enough power to pull out of this sucker. Uh, it does not want to. I'm going to crash. I'm going to crash. It should be able to fly inverted, but it's not letting me. Why won't you fly inverted? What is wrong with you? I want to do a barrel roll and it's just like sluggish. I had plenty of speed. I'm doing 100 knots. I should have been able to do a nice, smooth, long barrel roll. But instead, I failed miserably. And I've wasted it all for all of us. And I'm sinking like a ship of doom and death and destruction and sadness. And for that, my friends, I am very sorry. But... We're going to restart this checkpoint right here. Not the mission this time, just loading the checkpoint. Because we've been doing things over and over again quite a bit here lately. All right, 500 feet. Here we go. And we're going to go ahead and boom, 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 boom. All right, throttle back at 85%. Right about there. Yeah, I think so. And we're going to pull that. Oh, propeller's going back on its own. Very nice. And we are in place now, 524 feet. We're going to drop that down one more set. And we're just going to swing this puppy over right here. And there we go. We're lined up on the cruise ship, flying right at it at 505 feet. We're going to knock this thing back over right now. We're at 485, 475. We were one mile away from this. We're going to go ahead and see what we can do about jumping forward. We can't jump forward in this time. That's okay, though. With 100 knots of speed, we could climb this thing out and do a barrel roll if you guys wanted. We could do that. We're going to wait. And uh, barrel rolls at 500 feet is a bit sketchy anyway. But with an airplane that's not responding the way it's supposed to, it's just frustrating. So hopefully, uh, we'll be able to cure this problemo and uh, get things situated. I'm hoping anyway. But uh, as we can see here, we got a nice view. Nice view of what's going on around us. Nice tail view here. I could probably just try to set things up here in reverse, which would be kind of funky and fun. But we won't do that too much here, because that would definitely be confusing. We're going to slide back around here. Why don't you circle it to get a better view? That's a big ship. Why don't you circle it to get a better view? All right, so anyway, uh, this episode, guys, it is going to be a good one. At least I sure hope so. And uh, as you guys will see, we want to talk a little about... Oh, here we go. Let you really enjoy the scenery. We want to talk a little bit about how to learn to fly and what you should be doing to learn to fly. So I, I've not let that episode air yet, but I figured I might as well go ahead and talk about it. If you guys don't want to hear it, I won't post this episode. Hopefully you do. Oh, I get to put it through its paces now? All right, we're going to climb. At about uh, 70 knots, 75 knots, we're going to climb. That's probably a little bit too slow for it, actually. And now we're at 800 feet, so let's go to 1,000 feet, and we're going to try a few rolls. We're going to use a, little more, a bit more rudder and aileron in this, and we're going to climb that puppy all the way up full power now. And we're going to take this power, and we're going to move it all the way forward, and we're going to take this dive into place right here, and at 1,000 feet... We're going to start that pull out, and we're going to go ahead and pull it out right here. We're up, nose is up, and it will not let me roll. It will not let me roll. All right, we're not going to do that because it does not want me to roll this thing. It is just saying no, 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 no. 
And as we can see here at 70 knots, we're rolling the thing back up on its head though. It does not mind doing a little uh, a little action Jackson with a loop into Emmelman, but uh, that's about it. So, head to the entrance of the Wailaku River. Skipping to waypoint, boom. All right, so, how to learn to fly. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that, because uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can go to a school. I recommend uh, going to, there's a couple different places actually. One of my friends, his link will be in the description. You can go to m0a.com. Yes, please. That sounds fantastic. Oh, are you kidding me? Ah, uh, it's too low. Dadgummit. All right. So anyway, uh, check out my friend Jason Shapper. He's a really great guy. He's a good friend of mine. He runs a website called m0a.com, and it's a great place to get your start uh, at learning how to fly. Because if you learn all your ground school stuff first, it's a great, great way of uh, kind of understanding how flying is going to work, and then you can go, and it's much cheaper than learning to fly in cockpit first, which is what I did. So that's first first step is that. Now, uh, in addition to that, I would encourage you to uh, check out my other friend's website. It's flightmonkeys.com, F-L-I-G-H-T-M-O-N-K-E-Y-S, flightmonkeys.com. And, uh, oh, I hit again. I gotta watch this from a different perspective because that's totally screwing me over. So flightmonkeys.com is great stuff also. And what you'll discover is that uh, those guys are both gonna help you kind of get a good foundation for how you should get your flying started. Now there's a couple different ways of going about getting your flying started. One is to go to a big school like tailwheelsetc.com. Uh, there's some friends of mine actually local here at uh, Gilbert Field. Nice folks, uh, but it's gonna cost you between five and $10,000 to learn to fly. Now, as you guys know, that's a lot of money. That's, that's not messing around money. Now, when you got five or ten thousand dollars tied up in something just to learn to fly, you can learn to fly in a few weeks, sure. But uh, that's a lot of money, like I say. So keep that in mind as you're as you're kind of getting things moving forward. That you're going to have to spend a lot of money to do this. And if that's what you want to do, that's great. But if it's not really what your what your what your focus is in life, you might want to be careful. Uh, overspending early. So my encouragement to people is to do things a bit differently. Rather than spending all this money to learn to fly, uh, it, you know, somebody else's airplane, because the majority of your money, your, your cost, is actually going more into uh, how to, you know, more going into going more into where's my words? Going more into paying to rent someone else's airplane because that'll cost you almost two hundred dollars an hour for the nicer airplane. Some of them are even more than that. They're crazy, crazy money. Circle of the falls to the left. Keep right of the river. Oh, I just hit something that I should not. I couldn't climb up. I can't climb at all. It's really frustrating. Like this airplane, this does not want to climb up. I guess it's trying to keep me safe with the uh, lack of aerobatic training or whatever. But it's really frustrating for me because I, I know what I'm doing. I want to be able to climb. Daggummit. Anyway, so uh, the other option instead of going to a school and spending eight or ten thousand dollars up front is to do what I did and what a lot of other people have done, which is simply buy an airplane. Now, that seems daunting at first until you realize how inexpensive airplanes can be. Airplanes can cost you a, 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 actually a very minuscule amount of money today. You could buy a decent airplane to learn to fly in, like a Cessna 140 or 150, for a minuscule amount. Like, uh, for instance, you could you could probably pick one up now for between twelve dollars and $20,000. So that's a lot of money up front, you might think. But if you have decent credit or your parents are willing to co-sign with you, you can get a loan for one of these. It would only cost you a couple hundred dollars a month to learn to fly. Now, once you own the airplane, you can easily find a good instructor willing to work with you for between $30 and $40 an hour. Now, you only need about, say, 30 or 40 hours of their time. So your, your cost now is $1,200 for their time versus you know, $8,000. Now, your operating cost on the aircraft, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you some money, but it's not going to be anywhere near the kind of money you might expect or you might spend elsewhere. So... It's something to keep in mind. Uh, buying your own airplane is definitely a good thing to do. I used to sell airplanes for a living. I'd have to find you a, a link uh, or, or a, a someone else that did, used to do what I did uh, to help you find some good stuff uh, as far as buying airplanes. My, my encouragement would definitely be to uh, to look at barnstormers2000.com or barnstormers.com. Really good stuff there. Uh, a lot of good stuff like that you can go and learn You know what prices are, etc. And the best encouragement I can give you is to find older pilots or guys like Jason Shepard or Jamie Beckett from Flight Monkeys or M0A.com. Those guys are more than willing to help you every step of the way for free. You know, they're not going to charge you. Jason has a couple books you can read and whatnot. And he'd love to have you as a client, but he's willing to help for free. I know I know the guy. He's he's a very helpful guy and he's willing to help people big time. And Jason, excuse me, uh, and Jamie is literally there just for free to help all the time. So he wants to create a aviation advocates. 
and he's an old school flight instructor and a p mechanic really sharp guy so definitely worth your time to check him out and uh kind of see what these guys are doing i would definitely encourage that um so yeah buying an airplane's an option getting started with uh with an instructor you know and, and kind of get your feet wet doing your ground school first but for much less money is uh, another good idea that m0a.com can help with uh, and from there, the other option would be to get started with your sport pilot license first. Now, a sport pilot license uh, is a little bit easier to get. It's less, it's less uh, demanding, but you are much more limited as to what you can do. So you want to keep that in mind. It's based upon whatever it is you want to do with your world uh, is, you know, kind of a balancing act because there there are a lot of things to uh, go ahead and start turning left. Where the heck is that? Oh, there's the runway. Time for before landing check. Time before, before landing check. All right. So anyway, uh, this is all the stuff I can talk about, I guess. It's kind of tough to explain all these different little things at once, but uh, especially not with a checklist and trying to listen to what she has to say. I probably should have done this uh, beforehand. You know, I should have probably done this sooner. That would have been smart, but I didn't. Uh, I also want to teach you guys how I land airplanes in real life. Uh, I, I use a very different tactic than most people do. Uh, I actually do not land like this. Like right here, I'm basically driving the airplane. And as you guys can see here, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm relying on the engine staying on. So if I need to nudge that power, I can, I can survive and make it in. That's not my recommendation whatsoever. Um, my recommendation to people, like right there, I had to add power to make the end of the runway. My recommendation to people is definitely not this. My recommendation is definitely, rather than doing it this way, uh, do what you can to. Oh, that was a bad landing, guys. That was a bad landing. All right, we'll go ahead and take off again here if it'll let me. We're gonna take this off, and we're gonna take another landing shot right here. I'm gonna take this off, and as you guys can see here, we're applying all the way back at waist, and we're just gonna go ahead and wait, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, and that's a much better landing. Oh, it's still a little bit fast, a little bit fast, and right there, stuck it right there. 51 knots, nice braking, and we are back in place. So. Uh, I think that was a lot of information to share, I suppose, but I hope it was able to teach you guys at least a little bit about what you can do uh, to kind of get your get your start here in this aviation world. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do things, and you know it's definitely something I can't encourage you guys enough on. Um, there's a lot of great ways to get started flying, and the cool thing is that you can definitely do it yourself without a ton of money. I got started uh, with nothing, actually. I, I had no money. I went to work at a restaurant my grandmother owned. Uh, when I was 13 years old, I bought my first airplane kit by basically washing dishes in her restaurant for almost two years to pay for it. It wasn't cheap, but it allowed me the freedom to get my start in aviation. And, uh, you know, with that in mind, it's something you guys can do as well. I would definitely encourage that. I would definitely encourage you all to, uh, to start looking into what you can do to get your start and what you can do to make things cheaper or more affordable for you. Because flying is never going to be cheap, and it's only going to get more expensive. But it is one of the most rewarding things you can do in your life. And uh, getting started in fixed wing, that's the best way to go. Now, we're going to talk later about how to get started in paramotors, which is what I'm doing now because it's incredibly inexpensive. It's like basically cheaper than riding a motorcycle. It's incredibly cheap, and uh, it's incredibly rewarding. I'm loving every moment of it. So, yeah, we can talk more about that later. But, again, I do apologize for my slightly rambling nature. I hope it was okay since I am playing a game and trying to understand what's happening. But we can always retouch on all this stuff, and I'll do a more dedicated commentary in the near future. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the film or the video or whatever the heck you want to call this. And uh, I'm going to go have some dinner with my wife because she is cooler than being cool. I'll see you all later. Peace.